Hey there, welcome to the Poor Man's Workshop. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this super functional workbench completely out of two by fours. Stick around, because the video is coming up. It's really nice when you already have material ready for a project and you don't have to go out and buy any new material. That's the case with this project. I had a ton of 2x4s that were left over from a project that my brother-in-law was working on and I decided to use all those 2x4s to create a new workbench. Before I do any milling for the top, I decided that I was just gonna glue it all together and mill it after. So I used a ton of glue and as much clamping pressure as I can to reduce any of the twisting and turning or warping from the 2x4s. As you know, 2x4s aren't the straightest boards, so I kind of made do with what I could. I made four different sections like this because the boards were already cut too short than what I wanted for the workbench, so I have to glue end-to-end -end part of this workbench. Once the glue had dried overnight, I put each piece through the planer to clean up the faces of the board. Like I said in the last shop update, this project was actually done last summer. I just haven't got around to editing the film for it. Now that I'm looking at the film, my shop looks totally different than what it did six months ago. And let's face it, I've got a better looking beard now as well. So once all the planing was done, I cut each board to length on my miter saw. and then cleaned up the edges on my table saw. Now, like I said before, I had to glue the boards end to end to make it as long of a workbench as I wanted it to be. The process was pretty easy. I just used a couple dowels to go through the center and make sure the board stayed straight. After that, I planed the two pieces that are now the full length of the bench. and then glued them together to give me the full width of the bench. I used a couple support pieces of wood to make sure that the bench stayed straight while the glue dried. and the top is finished, looks great. Now for some reason I didn't get any film of me making the legs, but it's pretty simple. It's just three two by fours glued together and then ran through the joiner and planer to clean up the edges. And then I also created some uh, braces that are connected, a smaller brace going across um, on the side and then a longer brace that goes along the back to give it support. I was going to originally cut these lap joints using hand tools. Hand tools are kind of an ongoing educational process for me. I am not that great at using hand tools, so I'm going to stick to my table saw. I marked where I wanted the lap joints to be cut, and I clamped two of the legs together so I could cut two at a time. Then I used my miter gauge to help me cut these lap joints, make sure that they were straight. Hey, 
If you like what you've watched so far, make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up on this video. Also, don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified any time we have a new project come to the Poor Man's Workshop. During this process, I also cut the tenons of the mortise and tenons where the legs will connect to the workbench top. I don't know why, but the funnest part about not having a dado stack is being able to chip out and chisel out the center part of the lap joint. Uh, it was pretty fun. Obviously making sure everything's square is super important with a workbench because if not, you don't get a workbench that lays completely flat. And it's even more important when I'm planning on this being a hand tool workbench. This bench needs to be completely level. Now another thing that I failed to film was me cutting these through mortises. It's actually a good thing that I failed to film it because I'm not very good at it. Uh, that's something that I'm still learning. But how I was able to glue the legs to the top is via a mortise and tenant with this through mortise. It was a pretty straightforward glue up. Just use regular wood glue on the mortise and tenons and then also on the cross supports. But then on the cross supports, I also used three inch screws to make sure everything stayed aligned while the glue was drying. On the bottom of the legs, I used my router with a roundover bit to give a smooth round edge to make sure that the legs won't split when this workbench is picked up and put down hard. Now, because the glue was all dry, I removed the screws, drilled holes with a Forstner bit, and then filled it with a couple dowels to plug up the hole. I like the look of all wood versus having these metal screws in the side of this nice workbench.
because my through mortises were so terrible, it made the bench top not flat. So I filled in the through mortises with some epoxy that I could sand down to make it so that the workbench is a complete flat surface. Once the epoxy was dry, I gave it a good sanding with my belt sander. I'm not gonna put any finish on this workbench because I know that the top is gonna get deemed up. And to me, it's just not worth putting any finish on it. That's just my personal preference. I don't necessarily need any finish on this. After sanding, I put some rolling casters on all four legs. I love this style of rolling caster because it just takes a little push to engage the wheel, but then I can lower the bench and allow it to be on the ground sturdy and strong. It also allows me to push it out of the way when I'm not using it. And this guy is done. I love how this turned out. And I've loved using this workbench so far. It's added so much functionality to my workshop, being able to have a place to use my hand tools and being able to have another place to build stuff. It really helps me out on all my projects. That's pretty much it for the video, so thanks for watching. One of the many things I didn't film for this build is how I drilled the dog holes and installed the tail vise for this bench. But if you have any questions about how to do that, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments below and I can answer any questions you might have. And if you have any questions in general, just make sure you leave those comments below and I'll get to them when I can. We always appreciate you watching. Like I said before, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit ring that notification bell so you'll be notified anytime new videos come out to the poor man's workshop. Again, thanks for watching. And like I always say, never stop creating.